Greetings everybody, this is the Campfire Council and Thunderhand speaking here. Good to see you all again. I want to talk about a story that's a Native American tradition. It's called the Two Wolves or the Wolves Within. And it's about an old grandfather that is talking to his grandson about life. And he says, there's a fight going on inside me. And it's a terrible fight. It's between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority and ego. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, there's two wolves, really, well, what's the other wolf? And he goes, well, the other wolf is joy, peace, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, compassion, benevolence, reverence, and faith. And the grandson said, so these two are fighting each other? Which one's going to win, Grandpa? And his grandpa said, the one I feed the most. So I think that's a great story, and a lot of people probably have heard that story, and it's a very well-known story, but there's some that might not have heard that. And I think it applies basically to some of the stuff we're seeing today. We see the negative and the positive. We see the Oh, I guess the dark and the and the light. You might compare it to like two wolves, really. I mean, uh, two colored wolves, a white wolf and a black wolf, yin and yang. I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube because I like to see what's going on. And t You know, when you first go into it, it's like, okay, I just want to get info about what's going on in the world. And then you find out that these people all have an agenda. I've talked about this before, but I'm seeing it more and more and more clearly. And I see how easy it is for people to get sucked into that. You know, the headlines are usually like the mainstream media. I mean, they're the alternative media is taking on the persona of the mainstream media, which is no, 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 we don't want that. Which is, you know, got to have something to grab some, some uh, headliners here, some sensational headlines to grab the people. And usually it'll start off with urgent or warning or red alert or whatever, and then they'll go into their spiel. And it's all negativity. It's all what they call fear porn. Or it's something to, you know, get your mind excited and get you, oh, I got to see this or I got to read this. And it's an addiction. And these, this is what I'm realizing more and more. And I've got, I get caught up in this. I am no saint. I have done videos in the past where, but I grow. And I learn and I think about, well, what is my real purpose? What is my real agenda for my fellow man? And I come to all these conclusions or maybe I have a little epiphany and I did have an epiphany in several ways in the last couple of days here thinking about not only what I want to do with my videos, but what I want to do with the Campfire Council, which is 
a group that I'm very proud of. And the conclusion that I came to is that there's enough negativity, there's enough fear porn, there's enough doom and gloom, there's enough... I mean, we see it all around us. And I'm, am I saying that I will never say another word about what's going on on the planet if I think it's important? No, I'm not saying that. But I think I want to gear my approach more towards getting people unaddicted from that. And no matter what's going on out there, and we know that there's a lot of bad stuff going on, in fact, it's gotten to the point where, well, we don't really want to talk about it, do we? If you want to know about what's going on, check my videos in the past where I said, you know, I haven't, qu I was more into that. <clears throat> so, the, you know, my point here with the wolf thing and with my epiphany and my change of view is that I'm here to help my fellow man and how can I help my fellow man? How can I really get him aware and yet not get him addicted to some kind of fear thing? And so information is, is the key and awareness is the key and knowledge is the key. And the key is important because it unlocks doors. The doors to looking at the world, you know, with a different world view. I told somebody today, I think I posted something about this stuff is, it doesn't matter what happens. It's kind of like that saying, wherever you are, there you are. I mean, it really doesn't matter what happens. It's going to happen anyway. And so there's no use in getting people all excited all the time and all fearful and are all panicky and full of anxiety over things that haven't happened. And they keep saying, well, it's, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And it's like, whatever you put into your mind, that's what you manifest in your reality. If you're constantly thinking about the negativity in the world, and there's a lot of it, then that's what's going to appear in your life. People have to be self-empowered enough to realize that they don't have to go to this stuff every day and dwell on all this negativity. So I'm here, and the Campfire Council is here to offer you a different alternative to what you've been watching. And it'll be stories like the one I told today. And it'll be more about just the Campfire Council in general, because if I'm here to help my fellow man, then I want to talk about my organization that is here to help my fellow man. I'm excited about it. It's changing, it's, it's morphing, it's growing. As I grow, it grows, and I take on maybe a little bit different attitude about what it means to help your fellow man. The most important thing to me about helping my fellow man is lifting, lifting my fellow man's spirits. Okay, because this is what's needed right now. And putting them on the red road, the journey of life that is going to empower him, transform him and her. Transformation. Transformation into something that is going to make them feel good about themselves, is going to make them feel good no matter what's going on in the world, and is going to keep them on track and in balance. And I just did a thing about the prayer, as above, so below. As your higher self thinks, or whatever you feed your mind, 
see in between that higher self which I call sometimes I call that the immaculate consciousness and the sub immaculate consciousness and then just the regular consciousness okay so we get blocks in this sub immaculate consciousness this middle ground here and all this stuff that we're feeding into our mind that's negative that th th builds up like blocks and doesn't allow this flow to happen between the immaculate consciousness and the regular consciousness. In other words, it doesn't allow you to manifest the positive and, and the light, to put it, you know, in two words, the light, the positive, the the things that you want, not the things that you don't want. So that's, you know, the story of the wolf is just amazing. I mean, it's so far ahead of its time, the two wolves. And I think it's probably been said in many other traditions, in, you know, in the biblical tradition and, the, you know, in all the different tribal traditions, there's always a story like this about what we dwell on is what we become so I I've taken a little bit different tack and I like I say I'm growing even at my age you know you just never stop learning you think you're wise and then you get caught up into something or something is revealed to you and you go what am I doing I don't want to beat myself up too much because, you know, you can only try your best, but I want to talk about, you know, when you try your best, that's good enough, even if I've made mistakes in the past, or we all have, we, we can only try our best, you know. So, about this this new vision, or it's not really a new vision with Campfire Council. It's just a it's it's just a more positive. There's been some slight changes. Before I talked about getting out of the cities because of what you know the chaos that's going on there, but now I'm. I that vision is still there because it's important that people get next to nature but I really really do want to include in this charitable organization Campfire Council I want to include a transformational process for my fellow man period in other words I want him to be transformed spiritually and I think that that's the most important thing. And it's it's just it's something that's so important that warmth, okay, that individuality that that needs to be brought out of people, you know, because they're so used to being in the conundrum or the daily brainwashed mindset. And it's not their fault, so I gotta help them, or we all have to help. We all have the ability to help. And so this organization, Campfire Council, is here to help. Okay? It's here to help. And I plan on, on expanding this to you know a great deal. I want to get some grants. And I want to get some people that want to donate their time to different, you know, to volunteer. This is just like any other nonprofit. We need volunteers. We need people to donate their time. And so the donation thing isn't just about the monetary thing, although that's important. It's as important as anything else, but. When you think about donation, you have to think about, you know, what do you have to donate or what's going to transform you as a person? 
because giving has to be a two-way thing. So what's going to transform this organization and you as a person too? Okay, because you're important. You really are. And so this, this Campfire Council is not just about getting out of the cities, but it's about empowering people and making them aware of what their options are and helping them get back next to nature in the old ways. The ways that are going to make them feel good. And it's about real charity from the heart. And I plan on making sure that any donations that come in here as this thing expands, reservations like Pine Ridge Re Reservation is, are going to be included and the Four Corners area. I'd like to include the homeless. I would like to include the elderly. Anybody that's disenfranchised and needs help on any level. That's, that's what it's all about, people. So, Let's think about that, okay? Let's think about that. And I really would be happy if you would go and check out campfirecouncil.com. And I might put the link up here right on the screen as a little sign. Or if I don't, it's down below in the About section. And the most important thing for me right now is people join up here and get get involved. I mean, that's the most important thing is get on the mailing list because the mailing list is right there, campfirecouncil.com, right below. And then also below is actually a link you can click on get right on the mailing list. And then what I'd like you to do is go to the email section and tell me what you do or what skills you have because right now we're looking for like people that can get involved in kind of a well there's a lot of different things that that we need but uh, you know grant writers would be nice okay people that are maybe into fundraising for nonprofits that type of thing we got to give this entity this and it is legal now it has been registered so we have to get this some we have to put some wheels <laughs> on this campfire council and get it going and the main thing is is about that warmth of the campfire See, that's, that's the important thing, is, is the warmth that we can share. Instead of all this negative stuff, instead of all this fear and doom and paranoia, let's just enjoy life while we're here and, you know, have as much of a kindred bond with each other as we can. And yes, you know, I still do plan on getting some property. It'll happen because I'm going to write grants. We're going to get some property where we'll have spiritual retreats. Okay, but we will also have offices in the city because I figured out that you can't just boom, go to the wilderness because most people are not acclimated to that. So what we'll do is, this is my idea and I'm pretty excited about it, is we'll get some offices in towns where the people can come in and maybe take some classes there and get accustomed to what it's going to be like when you get out into the country. Or train them to be self-sufficient enough to get out there themselves. Okay, so the office will be like a transition point. The office is in the city. This is 
this is kind of a new concept that I've come up with also it won't just be for people that want to get into being self-sufficient and survive and that but it'll also be for other people that need direction and help like some of the elderly I like to get involved in this because there's that companion thing the younger and the older people and these people need their spirits raised okay these seniors they need they need companionship and they need help and then there's the homeless and I'm finding out that when I talk to the homeless people out there they got more of a handle on what's going on in the world situation I don't have to explain anything to them because they already know they know as much as I do about all the different things that are going on geopolitically and all and I'm just like amazed I'm like wow these people are homeless they don't where do they get this information from yeah, it's really kind of beautiful in a way so I have changed some of the wording and I really would like you to go read about the council at the link below just go there and read it and check it out you'll like it did some color changes we're going in the same direction but we're expanding out now to where you know this isn't just about oh we're fearful about getting out of the cities and we gotta survive in the wilderness no it's more about let's get help to the people right now that need it and include that getting out in the wilderness and because that's important I mean that is really important nature is important and so these offices that we have in the cities will get these people out on field trips okay and get them out to maybe if we have a ranch or a place out there they can stay and, and it'll be a retreat I mean this thing has endless possibilities when it's about love and compassion and being positive about things instead of negative and it's all going to be positive it's all going to be positive because there's just too too much negativity in the world today and there's too much poverty and there's too much loneliness and people need help and you know how you come about realizing some of these things let's just take for example my book now I was going through some really hard times and I still go through hard times but you know for a while there it was really really hard and as a cathartic experience I started writing down things that were helping me and then that book turned out to be an award-winning book I mean at first it was just writing but then it turned into a book and it evolved okay so the same thing is happening with this this idea about the campfire council it's I kind of started thinking initially about where I was in the city and how you know at one time living in the wilderness or living out more towards nature how important it was for me to get out there but then I started thinking well if it's important for me to get out there then it's just like my book I need to share that with other people they need to get out there at least in their minds at least in their minds you know and you can start by taking walks in the park or whatever but this this nonprofit organization is not going to be geared towards 
like your typical everyday nonprofit that donates to just one charity. This is about the best the best way I can describe it is to say tribal but sacred. Tribal is sacred, but tribal and sacred and reverential. Okay, and following the patterns of what we've been taught in the past about the Good Samaritan viewpoint and but see not just covering one area like you know one disease or this or that because I think all diseases emanate from our spirit not being at rest our not having a peace of mind not being in balance so isn't that the most important thing and what causes imbalance it's what surrounds us. It's the chaotic conditions that surround us. So as soon as we start, and it's loneliness, and it's despair, and it's loss of hope, you know, after seeing what's surrounding us. So how do we, how do we cure that? We go to the real root of the cause, which is raising the spirit. Raising the spirit. So I want you to think about the things I said today, please. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up down there in the little, it's either to the right or left, and share the video. Share it. And please go to the website and email me because we need help here. We need volunteers, just like, like I said, with any nonprofit, we, we will work off volunteer help and people that want to transform their lives by helping others. So right now there's a big need for the clerical to help me with that. And with the PR end of it, contacting others, just getting on the phone or just talking to people or maybe contacting different organizations and government entities that have grants and that type of thing. Let's put some wheels on this, people. Because we all love our fellow man, and we all know that warm feeling that we get <laughs> when we help our fellow man, we, even when we just give him a dollar on the street. So blessings to you all. Go to the links. Check out the credo underneath the the logo at the top of the page, campfirecouncil.com. And I appreciate everything that's been given to me through the donations that have already made it possible to get this far. <laughs> I told my son today, you know, if I can write a book and get published and be an award-winning author, I can do anything. There's plenty of resources out there okay people have to think of not just survival but abundance abundance and the only way that you can get abundance is to give and receive and to help others so let's get this thing going I'll say adios and uh, later on hope to see you soon again <laughs>